Hello, I'm Pastor David Seeley, and today we're going to be starting a new series of Bible lessons called Foundations of Bible History. The scripture says in Psalm 11, 3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Have you ever asked the question, what can I do? And I thought about that scripture, and for many years I thought that scripture meant, what can we do? What can we do? But I began to realize you can look at it another way. Instead of being a negative, what can we do? If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And I began to realize, what can the righteous do? We can say, what can I do? What can I do to rebuild the foundations? And that's what it is. It's not a hopeless scripture. This scripture shows us hope. What can I do to help rebuild the foundations that have been destroyed? Our culture has tried to destroy the foundations of God's word. Satan's been fighting God's word ever since the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. So today we're going to look at um, some of those things about building the foundations of God's word and uh, study into his word some of the history of how we got the Bible in English. So we're going to be going over several lessons and putting these together, and it's going to be exciting. So come along for the ride, and I hope you enjoy this. And so we're going to look at some things. There's a scripture in Psalm. 138 verse 2 that says thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name that tells me that god cares about his word and holds his word higher than his own name that's an interesting thought to think about just let that sink in a moment thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name very interesting so here's a thought how do we even know about God? How can human beings with our limited knowledge, limited understanding, how can we even know there is a God? How can we understand him? We see in the scripture a lot of things about God, but how do we know him? How does he make himself known to us? First of all, before we answer that question, let's look at a couple things about God that we do know from scripture. Psalm 90 verse 2 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. One of the things we know from Scripture is that God is eternal. He's never changing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has no beginning. He has no end. He is the eternal God, and we know that from Scripture. Another thing we know from James chapter 1, verse 17 is that God is unchanging. He's the same. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Isn't that a wonderful promise? Hebrews 13, 8 tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you can just count on it. God will never change. We see all kinds of things in this world are changing. The stock market changes. The news changes. Uh, people change. Relationships change. Uh, financial situations change, our health changes. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. Thank God for that. Malachi 3, 6 is another promise from God. He says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. God is the never-changing God. So back to our question. How can we know about God? That is our question. God has revealed himself to us in several ways. The only way we can know about God is if he chooses to make himself known to us. He's not visible. We can't see him. We can't hear him audibly with our ears. We can't touch him with our hands. We can't smell him. We can't taste him. So how do we know there's a God? How can we reach him? How can we understand him? Well, let's take a look. God has revealed himself to us. Otherwise, we'd know nothing about him. First thing we'd like to look at is God reveals himself to us through his creation. Think about that. Now, God's creation doesn't tell us everything about God. If you look up at the stars in the sky, such as behind me, you see the beautiful scene of, of outer space. You look at the night sky and you know something about God. You know that he's huge. You know that God is big, and the Bible tells us he holds the planets and the stars in the palm of his hand and calls them all by name. So by looking at nature, by looking at creation, we know a few things about God. We know he's big. We know he's powerful. 
We know he's creative. You look at the flowers and the trees and the beauty of the of the rivers and the babbling brooks and the and the ocean, the mighty rushing waters. We know that God is powerful. Here's some things to think about: how to prove that God exists. A building has to have a builder. Got your brain turned on here for this? This is real simple but real profound. A building has to have a builder. You see a building? You're in a building? There was a builder. Easy enough. The second one is a painting had to have a painter. You see the beautiful art on display? You see all the things that are created, they're painted? They didn't paint themselves. Now, you might see some of these modern art that just look like they painted themselves, splatters of paint on a, on a canvas and a $1,000 price tag, and people look at, wow. Whether it looks like it had a painter or not, it did. It had a painter. Creation has to have a creator. That's pretty easy. A building has a builder. A painting has a painter. Creation has a creator, and we see that in nature God has preserved that for us through creation. He reveals himself to us as the creator. So that's one of the ways God shows himself to the world is through his creation. We still wouldn't know very much about God if that's all we had, but thank God he speaks to us in other ways. Here's one. God speaks to us through our conscience. That conscience is that feeling inside of you that makes you feel guilty and rotten when you do wrong. It makes you feel at peace when, when all is well with God. God has put within us a conscience, and that conscience knows that some things are right and some things are wrong. A little child has a conscience. A little child does not have to be taught to misbehave. Any of you that have small children, did you have to sit them down and say, Now, son, you're behaving too well lately. Why don't you lie more often? You haven't hurt your sister in a while. What's going on with that? You know, we don't teach our children to sin. They do that on their own. But even when they do, they have a conscience that knows it's wrong. You ever notice a child looks both ways before stealing a cookie or, or a piece of candy? Their conscience. God has given us a conscience that is aware of right and wrong. And that's one of the ways he speaks to us. The next one I'd like to look at is the word of God, the written word. God speaks to us through the Bible. Now, that is one of the most vivid ways that we can hear from God. He has written down in his word, inspired it to people, to writers, to put down exactly what he wanted us to know about him, about creation, about the history of the world. God has put it there exactly for us to read so that we can know about God through the written word. Thank God for that written word. The written word is inspired by God. It is given by him. And it is absolutely inerrant. That means no mistakes. It is infallible. It means it can't fail. It is eternal. It can't change. The word of God is just as unchanging and eternal as God himself. Wow. Think about that. God also speaks to us through his living word. Jesus is called the living word. John chapter 1 says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the living word. He is the expression of God to us in human form. He came to us because we could not come to him. There's nothing we can do to impress God. There's nothing we can do to please God. There's nothing we can do to earn our salvation. He became one of us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And the Bible says, In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So when you read about Jesus in the Gospels and you read his words, if you have a red letter edition, the red letters are the ones he spoke. When you read about the Lord Jesus and you understand him, you understand all of God because he is God in the flesh. He's the living word. So God has chosen the most dramatic way to reveal himself to us is to become one of us. To send his son Jesus to come to this world and live a perfect life, sinless life. He was killed and he died on the cross. He was buried and resurrected for us to demonstrate his love for us and provide atonement for our sin. I just say hallelujah to that. Isn't that wonderful? The fifth way God speaks to us is through his Holy Spirit. The third person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're all one and we see them through scripture. 
We see them in uh, various places in the scripture, and, and you see the Father uh, speaking from heaven. This is my beloved Son in whom I well please. You see the Holy Spirit coming down on him in the form of a dove at the baptism of Christ. We see all the parts of the Trinity, but God speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. The Bible says if we are children of God, we have the Holy Spirit living in us. God's Spirit lives in his followers. And he applies the scripture to our life. We read the word of God and fill our mind with scripture. The Holy Spirit will bring that scripture to our mind at the time we need it most. Isn't that wonderful? God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. Another way God speaks to us is in the future. I believe with all my heart that when we get to heaven, God will continue to speak to us through all eternity. And we will continue to learn new things about God. You ever think about something? We can never know everything there is to know about God. There's always more. If we ever came to the end of God, He wouldn't be God. Just like we can never find the end of the universe. No one's ever come to a spot in space where they say, Oh, there's a stopping sign, there's a stop sign, there's a barricade, there's nothing beyond this point. We don't know the end of the universe. There is no end. There's no end of God. God is, is eternal and he'll continue to speak to us in heaven. We'll continue to grow closer to him. The Bible says that his right hand are pleasures forevermore. The joy of heaven will never end. And so he'll continue to reveal new truth to us, new life to us, new joy to us through all the endless ages of eternity. That's a wonderful thing. It's provided for us through the redemption provided by Jesus Christ for those who have accepted him as Savior and are forgiven, walking in his light and truth. And God has prepared a place for us in heaven where he'll continue to reveal more and more of himself to us for all eternity.